Good evening, everyone, at the Rush Hour Sports Network. It is yours truly, Jay Smooth, and of course, I have my uh, co-host Money here with me. Good to see you, sir. Good to have you back. And of course, folks, we're going to run through the playoff games from this past weekend, and uh, let's go ahead and start on Saturday uh, with the Raiders and the Bengals. The Bengals won twenty-six to nineteen. Uh, of course, Cincinnati moving on to the next round and essentially putting on a very good game. Uh, of course, Derek Carr uh, on the other side, you know, did did well for the Raiders. But all in all, this was more of a Cincinnati game. It was close in the end. The the referees, of course, uh, messed up the very end of the game there. And as a result, that referee crew won't be uh, officiating any more of the playoff games. But other than that, it was a good win for Cincinnati. And uh, Las Vegas doesn't have anything to hang their head about, even with the referee fiasco. But still, it was a good season for them. But, yep, Bengals advance. I mean, when you make this Raiders team and all they went through this year, the fact they even made it to the playoffs is a, is a overachievement. Well, yeah, we and, and we said it last week. They shouldn't have even been in the actual playoffs. It should have been a spot for the uh, the Chargers, really, but... Uh, yeah, again, they don't really have anything to hang their head about, so the, the fact that they even got in was an accomplishment, and, uh, plus next year, they're gonna look different anyways, they're probably gonna have it, they're gonna have a different head coach, uh, as far as the quarterback situation, there's no guarantee that Derek Carr will even be there, um, and there's not even a guarantee that Marcus Mariota will be there, cause he's still the backup, and their team's desperate enough to give him a shot as a starter, so, uh, that team is going to look a bit different next season, anyway. So, for for what they had and for what they went through, it was a good. It, it was you know pretty much a good successful. Excuse me, a successful season for the Las Vegas Raiders. Yeah. And then in our second game, uh, this was certainly, <clears throat> I'd say this was certainly skull drag of the playoffs, only because uh, only because of the margin of victory here. Uh, well, actually, well. Yeah, well, almost. Well, actually, technically, yeah, because uh, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. There was there was one that was close. Uh, but yeah, I'd say in terms of margin of victory, this one certainly is it. Uh, the Buffalo Bills beat up on the New England Patriots, forty-seven to seventeen at home. It, this game was essentially over before it even got started. Uh, Bill. It, that's what I mean, man. Before the game even really got underway, it was pretty much done and. You know, Bilicek was simply just outmatched in this one. And, you know, considering this was Mac Jones' first season and everything, and, you know, Mac Jones, essentially, he had enough pieces around him on this team to at least look decent. Uh, one thing we could certainly count on is that Mac Jones is, uh, he's, he's probably not going to be the quarterback of the future for the Patriots, I don't think, because he had an okay season, but... You can tell uh, Bill Belichick is just looking at this guy like he like some of the throws he made, uh, some of the plays that were called. You know, some of course some of the calls were on Belichick, but mainly seeing Mac Jones on offense get completely exposed like that really says a lot uh, about where the Patriots are probably going to look in the future. I know Belichick is probably looking at him with the side eye a bit, but really he should look at himself that way too because the whole team was outplayed. They were just outmatched on both sides of the ball. Uh, Buffalo came to play, and quite frankly, the the Patriots just had no real shot. But this was certainly a game where it, it said a lot about Mac Jones and a lot about all the holes that the Patriots had. I mean, yeah, but I disagree. I mean, I think the Patriots are another team that overachieved this year. And I think Mac Jones is just fine. I mean, this is his first playoff game. None of the first year, none of the quarterbacks that were playing a playoff game for the first time were looked good this week. I think Mac Jones is just fine. It's just one year. Again, it was an overachievement because no one expected the Patriots team to come close to the playoffs, and yet they ended up having one of the better records in almost a bunch of division. So I think the Patriots are fine with it forward. They're just a few pieces of things. And I wouldn't necessarily say fine when you get kicked in the face by 30 points in the first playoff game against your rival. But, you know, it, if anything, it really shows how far behind they are and how much they need to catch up. <laughs> you know what I mean? It just goes. I mean, in... Yeah, but I'm just saying the fact that they were here. I mean, we were talking at the beginning of the season saying, oh, Mac Jones is shit and the Patriots are probably going to win six games. And they went 10 and were one game away from winning the division. Yeah. 
they threw it done in the playoffs because Mac Jones was getting nervous, as most rookie quarterbacks do in their first start. But I don't think it's a big deal. They do. The only thing is, though, I can't give Mac Jones any sort of credit after looking at this because that was his first playoff game. I get that, but we've seen rookies have their first playoff games, and they do okay even when they lose. Mac Jones just got straight kicked in the teeth in his first playoff game. That's never good. You, you, one, one of two things happens after that. He either comes back and takes the league by storm, or he's going to crash and burn and become another quarterback that can do just enough to get a team to a playoff game. But once they get to the playoffs, they just turn off completely. And that, Which, that's not... I mean, at the end of the day, my point, all I'm saying is that, like, that's probably his ceiling, is that he's a quarterback that's just enough to maybe win a playoff game or two. That is his maybe ceiling. It's, Jimmy, it's Maybe even be a Jimmy Garoppolo, Trent Dilfer, and get lucky and win a Super Bowl. Yeah. I mean, we maybe... Know that. Well, but the thing, I'm just saying, right. as a quarterback... He's going to be all right. He's going to be a serviceable starter. It all well. It all depends on who's around him because you have to remember this goes back to college. He won a national championship because of the team around him. If he had a normal, if he had a normal squad, he's not winning that. You know what I mean? What what, what this game shows is Mac Jones cannot be the guy. He needs pieces around him, like high end pieces, and he will be an okay game manager. Because you know you know what I mean. You're only winning a title with Mac Jones if you have the pieces in place. He cannot be the I mean, guy. Most quarterbacks need pieces in place to be successful, period, regardless of how talented they are. They do, but when you're Bill Belichick and you're I mean, the and you're the Joe Patriots. Burrow, Joe Burrow played great this year, but last year when he only had Tyler Boyd, he was just all right. Right, so, and that was the thing. He only had and, and now he has and now he has weapons, so they're playing well. And it works for every quarterback the same way. Yeah, but this is not a good one for Mac Jones. It shows that the Patriots need a lot more pieces, and considering what free agency is, how many of them can they get? You know what I mean? Because Mac Jones is not one of those quarterbacks where you give him one piece and he's fine. No, you got to give him a whole team. Like, look look at who he had at Alabama. Look at all those first-round draft picks. That was a loaded team. He wins with a loaded team. Can the Patriots become a loaded team? That's what the question is for the offseason. Can they stock up on the best players available in the draft? Or can those draft picks achieve? Can they get free agents that are in the high variety instead of the mid variety? Because, again, Mac Jones can only be a leader of high-end pieces, high-end free agents, high-end draft picks. You can't put that guy around an average squad and hope they all achieve with that. That's not going to happen. <laughs> Mac Jones ain't like that. So that that's what the biggest question for the Patriots is. Can they load up that team? That's that's what the front office needs to figure out. I don't know if they will be able to do it because of where their draft positioning is after this past season. They're, they're, they're going to be pretty down in the dumps in the draft. So this is going to be a free agency type of offseason for them. If they can load up like at least get some at least get some like high end weapons you know it doesn't just have to be offensive line but just if they can get some receivers a, a good running back a solid tight end you know Mac Jones has got something if they can yeah. only get yeah you, you know what i mean like if they can get I mean, well, I mean, yeah yeah i mean like all, all you're saying is it's cool, it's cool. yeah cuz cuz just that's just the thing you know i yeah. feel like that's you know for everyone you just got to get the pieces around for any yeah, I and mean, and that it was tough cause, right. look, the Patriots' best wide receiver this year was fucking Kendrick Bourne. Right, exactly, so, exactly. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, they they need to upgrade. No quarterback's gonna be successful with that. I don't care who you are. Exactly, like <laughs> even like not even Tom Brady can work with that. And he can work with anybody. So so absolutely, that's gonna be the biggest question for the Patriots in the offseason. So honestly. You know, it's funny that, like, we talk about the, you know, the Raiders offseason being important. This is the most important one for the Patriots because now it's about building around Mac Jones. They see what they have. Uh, they, they see how far, Belichick can see how far he can go with a quarterback like this. And they made it to the playoffs. And while Mac Jones didn't have his best game in the playoffs, still, l- like you mentioned, they made it there when they weren't expected to. So now it's... Can they build upon that? So, yeah, man, this this is going to be an important one for the Patriots. And we haven't said that in a long time. 
Normally, the Patriots are able to cruise in the offseason, but dare I say, this is the most important they've had in a long time. Yeah. It's going to be one where they definitely yeah. got to pay attention. And, man. I mean, <clears throat> at the very least, I feel like, you know, with Matt Jones, he definitely has shown so far that he can, he can be their quarterback for another couple of years at least. That's true. No matter what they do. That, that is very true. And you know what? Let, and actually, like you said, I'm glad you said that last part. He can be their quarterback for the next couple of years, but yeah, it all depends on what they do. If they don't do him any favors, like get him protection or at least get him a solid running back and maybe a solid tight end, or if they don't even do that, get him some receivers that will snatch anything out of the air. They could do that. He'll be there a while, but if not, he's only going to last another year before uh, some defensive line tears him apart. Absolutely. And going to our Sunday games, you want to talk about <clears throat> you want to talk about an overachieving team. Man, the Eagles just got stomped by the Buccaneers, 31 to 15, and you the know, don't even do it, justice, it, it it really doesn't, man. And you know what? It, it's funny. Like Jalen Hurts, I've always I've always been up and down on Jalen Hurts because, you know, I've I you know, watching a lot of Baltimore and a lot of Washington games, you know, the Eagles always come across my radar over on the NFC. And Jalen Hurts, he has some of the intangibles you want in a quarterback. But the question is, my, my fear is, can this new coach and can Howie Roseman actually get him the pieces to help him succeed? Because I look at a game like this. And it was not Jalen's best game at all. And it wasn't just his fault. That that entire offense was just oh it, it was abysmal to watch. Like Jalen was getting he was getting destroyed by that Buccaneers front line, just getting destroyed out there. And uh, above all, the weapons on offense did not do him any favors either. This was one of Tom Brady's easier games in terms of picking apart a part of defense. And then one of the Buccaneers' defense's best games in terms of just completely dominating a quarterback. But you want to talk about a team that has a lot to work for in the offseason. The Eagles certainly have to, man. They they need to get Jalen Hurts some help out there because he has nothing to work with. Yeah, I mean, it's a similar situation to the Patriots. Dare I make a comparison? This, this Eagles team in general reminds me of, like, Baltimore Ravens and Lamar Jackson for the year. He had no one to throw to. Right. His best option was a washed up Michael Crabtree. Oh. Do you remember that year? <laughs> oh man, that was that was a crazy year. And like at least at least he's got like Devonta Freeman or Devonta Smith maybe. Um But yeah, they need to get him some new weapons. Jalen Rager needs to go away. That yes. Man drops way too many passes and his muffin punts. I don't even know why they had him punt return it. The shaky hands he got, bro. Yeah, man, I I didn't understand that one either. <laughs> yeah, and I think what he muffed like two or three pumps in this game too. He did, yeah. That the special. Oh my goodness, I'd never seen somebody like just juggle so many punts before, so many punt attempts before in one game. And to think they drafted him in the same draft as Justin Jefferson, like five picks before. Oh, goodness. That's such a damn shame. That's what I mean, man. That front office has been whiffing lately on their picks. You know, for every good yeah. pick, and like they'll get a Darius Slay, who's an excellent DB, but then you'll get other picks like that. You know, then you, they'll they'll just you know whiff on like three or four more, and then you'll see it out on the field just play out during a playoff game. And you you can't have somebody muff four punts in one game. That can't happen. That cannot happen. So, Exactly. So it's it's just unacceptable all around, man. The the Eagles are really going to have to go back to the drawing board on this one. And even though they seem committed to Jalen Hurts, which they should, they need to completely rebuild that offense. And they need to do something about the special teams as well. Cause, and, and that defense needs a little bit of work, too. Because even though you have Slay back there, uh, who else they got, you know? I mean, their front, their front four is good because they still got Fletcher Cox and he's going. Well, that's true. Great, that's true. It's kind of that linebacking <laughs> core, you know. I mean, the Eagles' defense for the most part was okay this year, but mm-hmm. like that offense, the weapons, Jalen's got no one to throw to. Their running game was 
Hawaii this year, but he had no one to throw to when he needed to throw the football. Yeah, when it came down. The score doesn't do it justice. This was 31 nothing, and the Eagles got some pity touchdowns at the end. Absolutely, like it's like you said, this should have been a blowout. Really, the way this game turned out. And my goodness, you want to? And by the way, let's talk about. <clears throat> dare I say, the upset of the weekend, an upset that I was pretty pretty confident about. The 49ers pull it off against Dallas in a game of terrible clock management, uh, <clears throat> ter- terrible refereeing. And oh and and dare I say, absolute heartbreak of once again one of the most bandwagoning, uh, I would say the most bandwagoning franchise you'll ever see. Just nothing but fans crying all over Jerry's world as the 49ers beat the Cowboys 23-17. Forty Niners almost gave it away at the end too. <clears throat> they came very close to doing that, but luckily they didn't. However. Uh, you want to talk about somebody that needs to go under fire? Mike McCarthy does because at the end of in in the closing drive of this game, <laughs> the Dallas Cowboys with zero timeouts while driving down the field, they decide to call a quarterback sneak, well a quarterback draw play, and Dak Prescott runs down the middle, gets the yards, he gets tackled, <laughs> but my goodness, no timeouts, he gets hit in the middle of the field, and the clock just expires. Terrible clock management, terrible play calling, and Mike McCarthy standing there looking like a complete clown during the whole thing. And really, it's just classic Dallas Cal. And of course, Tony Romo. How, how can I forget Tony Romo with his uh, biased commentary throughout all four quarters? <laughs> Literally, you could hear Tony Romo. Like you can, if you listen closely, you can hear the sound of pom poms in Tony Romo's hands. Uh, that are silver and blue for the Cowboys, the way he was just cheerleading them on the whole game, and the way he sounded like he wanted to cry uh, when the clock hit zero, which was a personal great moment for me. Um, yeah, this was all around ugly for the Cowboys, man. They they were losing this game from the onset. <clears throat> Fans were crying at the end of the third quarter. That's how you know it was getting ugly. Stephen A. Smith was releasing Twitter videos by the beginning of the fourth quarter laughing at him. Even he knew it was done. Uh, my goodness. The, the If anything, this also exposed that Mike McCarthy is not the, the, the guy to coach this team. They're way too talented for anything like this to happen, for something embarrassing like this to happen. I mean, the crowd is throwing garbage at the referees. Jerry Jones is crying on his radio show. Cowboys fans are becoming memes, and they're also fighting each other in the parking lot. Not even fighting 49ers fans. They're fighting each other. That's how mad they are. The, this game was just glorious for anybody that is not a Cowboys fan, and I'm sure you have a lot to say about it. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, 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 will, I will take this L with grace because this was the only game we were divided on last week in our predictions. <laughs> Correct. Only because, only because I wanted, I, I, I want Dak to get one playoff. I was expecting them to lose next week, but I wanted them to get one win just to say that they did. <laughs> right. You know? Right. So, so that, so that Dak can prove that he's a worthy quarterback because he's definitely, because despite the last play, he's still a better quarterback than Jimmy Garoppolo. I think we can agree. 100 percent man and i oh my goodness J- jimmy garoppolo right now like his agent is just counting up the money that he's going to get because his trade value is skyrocketing without having to do a whole lot oh for sure my goodness jimmy garoppolo didn't even play a great game but he's just on a he's just on a team that makes good decisions that doesn't make dumb decisions I, I agree with you. Absolutely, man. The four, I'll tell you what. <clears throat> the 49ers and their play calling is on point, man. Shanahan has got this team rolling right now. And even though they're going to lose next week, we're going to get to that game later. But my goodness. the I got to give it to the 49ers, man. That defense is there. Debo Samuel is a bully on that field too, man. He is a oh bully. Who, and by, and what a stud, man! Debo Samuel had has to be easily like this one of the steals of the year for the Forty ers because that guy is coming into his own. It and uh, honestly, kind of out of nowhere, this is kind of the year where he's 
getting into his own now, and everybody's starting to realize how good he is, but my goodness. 49ers pulling this one off right here. I'm sure the entire country is thankful for this. The Cowboy fans that are going to hear this, though, like my buddy uh, Pulse Reloaded down there in Texas, I know he is not happy about this shit. Sorry, bro, but <laughs> look, next year, I'll, I'll say this. The Cowboys this offseason, <clears throat> they, they have a lot to assess. Mike McCarthy is going to be back there next year, but bro, I, I saw... I, I, yeah, unfortunately, but I saw I saw the list of people that they're gonna lose the free agency. Oh, it is a mile long. It is a mile long. This Cowboys team is about to lose a lot of people, so they have a lot of decisions to make. And quite frankly, I, all I gotta say is this: next season, if they don't win a playoff game or even make it, like they're probably gonna make it to the playoffs next year. But if they don't win a playoff game next year. We're going to see either Mike McCarthy get canned or we're going to see uh, Dak Prescott get shipped out of town because I can't imagine Jerry Jones, his old ass, will take any more of this. I agree. Yeah, I think, yeah, they don't do something productive next year or better than this year. Better than this year. It's only going to get worse for them. Absolutely. Um, Everybody's in the hot seat in Dallas. To, yeah, they're going to have to reevaluate everything. Yeah. But like you said, I mean... Just, thing that's so disappointing is that like there's so much talent on this team this year you talk about that. yes you know zeke didn't have the best year but tony pollard's also pretty good they're back and running back absolutely uh, cd La- receiving core they got C- Cooper, cd lamb, CD lamb only had one catch by the way in this game which i need to point to coaching like kellen moore like you fool like why is cd lamb only being targeted one time and having one catch like he's only i think his targets were maybe like three or four times but it's like again you have that stacked team there but the play calling is garbage the head coaching is garbage too and what's worse is kellen moore is on the short list for other teams to consider as head coach including the vikings if they were to get that guy as a head coach the play calling would go in the toilet man Especially when you don't get a guy like CeeDee Lamb involved. Like, what? Yeah. And then, like, and then even on defense, they got some people, you know, they got Lane Van Der Esch. And granted, he hasn't been good with the deep ball. He allows some big plays. But Trayvon Diggs get picks on the back end. They got DeMarcus Lawrence getting sacks up in the front. All that. Like, they got talent. But the coaching is just shit. And, you know, the biggest signal... You know, we talked. You talked about it earlier. You mentioned that one of the biggest signals of bad coaching is when you're penalized as much as they were in this game. You could say, "Yeah, it's the refs' fault and blah blah blah, and this and that and the other." And that's true. Right. That's true. I, I, I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say that I don't. I don't disagree or yell at refs' calls if I don't like them, et cetera, et cetera. You know, we're all. all in. You know, I admit to disagreeing with some calls or two with the right. This year for sure, for sure. Oh, these these hey, look, the hey, look, day, these refs suck. These refs definitely suck. Oh, they definitely did. But also, at the end of the day, you know, <laughs> part of penalties too is just bad coaching too. If, if the team isn't disciplined, the team isn't disciplined. Right. The cow. Cal- it's funny. The Cowboys don't really have any excuse for this. The, this was supposed to be the year they finally get a playoff win. They didn't do it. And now, once again, they have gone a complete step backwards and have to reassess everything. For sure. Absolutely. And you want to, in the next game, you want to talk about a complete overhaul. <clears throat> the Steelers' season finally comes to an end. It should have came to an end during the Raiders-Chargers game, but nonetheless, uh, they get kicked in the face by the Chiefs 42-21. Of course, the Chiefs are going to advance. But the real story here is that was the last game of Big Ben Roethlisberger. He is now done as a football player. <clears throat> and now the Steelers have to reassess their future at quarterback. Uh, you know, Mason Rudolph is not very good. Dwayne Haskins uh, has not developed at all. Uh, and there's a very good chance that the Steelers are going to be in play for either a high draft pick. You have the likes of Matt Corral. You have Pickett. You have Willis out there, uh, quarterback, even though the class is not strong. But they are also in play for a lot of free agents. You know, the Russell Wilsons you have. They have Matt Ryan out there. They have um, a couple others. I'm, I doubt they're going to trade with the Browns and get Mayfield. Mayfield will be there another year. But uh, they have other quarterbacks they can go after. Garoppolo will likely be on that short list, too, since we were talking about him earlier. Uh, but, yeah, they're going to be... 
in the market to see where their quarterback uh, position goes from here. Do they draft a guy and develop him, which I'm pretty sure they're likely going to do. They're going to be in an interesting draft spot, though, because even though even though they won't be able to draft the best available quarterback, uh, well, I'm sorry, not the like the number one overall like best quarterback, they're probably going to get one of the top three, top five because these QBs are not going to fly off the shelves in uh, round one. A lot of other teams have other needs. Uh, so it looks like the Steelers are going to be in play there. But, yeah, this is where this is essentially where the Steelers are going to change because, yeah, it's, it's officially the end of an era in, in Steel Town. It's going to be very interesting to see what they do. And on Monday night, <clears throat> this was game of the weekend right here. The Cardinals get absolutely destroyed by the Rams, 34-11. This was, this was a game where both the Cardinals looked like they didn't belong, but at the same time, this is what we wanted the Rams to be because the Rams made all those moves midseason. <clears throat> they, they rescue Odell from Cleveland. They get Von Miller out of Denver. Uh, they stack the team up nicely. And now it's led to this. A big playoff win. Matt Stafford's, uh, I believe, first official playoff win. I, I thought, yeah, I thought he got one in Detroit, but apparently not. Um, yeah, this was his first official playoff win. And by the way, the Cardinals team got destroyed. I mean, at one point, Cam Akers, who came back from an injury that should have ended his season, but came back just in time for the playoffs, destroyed Buda Baker at one point, hit the man right in the head, knocked him out. The man had to be carted off, uh, sent off in an ambulance, shipped off to the hospital. I mean, there are people getting beat up left and right. Kyler Murray threw the ugliest pick six, <laughs> I think, thrown all season long, maybe of all time, a very ugly throw. Um, and overall, man, this Cardinals team just they they just look like they had no they had no response, no answer uh, for the Rams. J.J. Watt worked his way back from the injury uh, that he suffered to play in this game, and it, nothing happened there. Just nothing on defense. They could not stop that Rams offense and that Rams defense was just feasting on Kyler Murray from quarter one. Really, this game was, this was another game that was pretty much over from the first quarter. Oh, yeah. I mean, me and you talked about it during the game. I said it on last week's show. <laughs> you I did. I feel it from the beginning. This game was going to be a blowout. That's true. Some you, people, some people that I was talking to or talking to about things, they were like, oh, no, you're crazy. This game will be all right. Right. And I was just like, nah, y'all just watch. The Cardinals ain't going to be ready for this game. And lo and behold, they were. It's true. That was just the trend. The Cardinals, you know, we talk about this. It's like, towards the end of the season, they whipped their way into the playoffs. And they whipped their way to the end of last season and missed the playoffs. So I just had this feeling that it was just like, they're going to come into the playoff game. And they're just going to get picked apart. Because... They just won't be ready for this. And plus, knowing also for people like Colin Murray was their first playoff game, I had a feeling it was going to be rough. You know, and the Rams came out and took care of business. Sean McVay, he'd been here before. You know, the players that they went and got, you talk about Odell Beckham. He hasn't, Odell Beckham hasn't gone deep in the playoffs, but he's played a playoff game before. Vaughn Miller's won a Super Bowl before. You know, right. Aaron right. Donald, the rest of them, they, they've been through it already. They were just in the Super Bowl a couple of years ago. They know how it goes. Matt Stafford, yeah, he along for the ride. But, like, <laughs> but the Rams, they've done this. The Cardinals haven't. So I was just like, you know, this is how this is probably going to be. I think the true test for the Rams is next week. That's oh, yeah. we're really going to see what they're made of. Cause they, got, they got an easy one because the Cardinals were just never going to be ready. 
That is true, man. And you know, the, this was the, this was truly the year for the Rams to do something special because, like you said, <clears throat> they have been there before. And when you put together a team like this, winning is pretty much the only option. So for them to go out and just dominate like that, it, it sent a big message. And next week's games are going to be just as interesting. By the way, I am over on sport on my bookie. Dot .ag uh, for this next segment <coughs> where we're going to run through the games. And uh, it's funny. Right off the bat, our first game, the Bengals and Titans. The Titans are a three-and-a-half point favorite over the Cincinnati Bengals. The Bengals, to me, the Bengals uh, are like one piece away from doing some real damage next year. You know, this year... They, they've proven that with the pieces they have in place now that they mean business. You know, they won the division. They knocked off the, you know, the wounded uh, Raiders. And now they're going up against a legit Titan squad who gets back Derrick Henry, who looks, by the way, <clears throat> he looks huge. He looks fast, looks explosive. He, he's looking good in practice. He looks like he's uh, at 100%. And now that he's going to be back to 100%, uh, Tannehill can go back to being a game manager and uh, I'm pretty sure at this point Tannehill is gonna he's gonna do just enough to get them over the hump in this game I don't know if he's gonna I don't believe he'll out throw Joe Burrow by any stretch of the imagination but uh, I do believe it is going to be the ground game of King Henry that's going to be the difference here give me I'm gonna take the Titans uh, minus three and a half there as the favorites who you got This one's going to be an interesting matchup, I think. Oh, yeah. You know, I think the, uh, Possibly the best of the weekend, actually. It's true. It's possible. I mean, I think we got quite a few candidates. True. I think every game is going to be really good this weekend. Very true. Uh, but um, big thing out of here, so, like, the Titans have not officially said whether Derrick Henry's playing or not. I think the announcements has come out on Friday. Hmm. Um, so we will see officially if the King will be be making his return but assuming that he is some things to keep in mind for the Bengals uh I know a couple of their defensive linemen got injured at the end of that game yes the Raiders last week I know Trey Hick. Hendrickson was one of the uh, uh uh I forget how to say one of their names that was out uh, uh, I know I know who, yeah I know who you're thinking of but yeah I can't think of the name and then uh, Right. So they're getting people back. Uh, I'm going to take the Bengals on this one. Hmm. I think originally in my original prediction, I was going to take the Titans, but I feel like now seeing how the Bengals came out, you know, they have a game behind them, so they don't have those first game jitters no more. That, like, I think the matchup works out for the Bengals to maybe sneak one. Right. Um, the Bengals' defense has been reasonably stout this year at times, uh, particularly against the run. You know, granted, we know Derrick Henry is a different beast, a different animal, but also, we don't, even though Derrick Henry is quote unquote 100%, that doesn't necessarily mean that he's going to be the Derrick Henry that we saw two months ago. You know, and he could be vulnerable, he could be easily stopped, the Bengals' defense could be prepared. I mean, let's keep in mind that the last time we saw Derrick Henry play a playoff game last year in the wild card round, the Ravens stopped him at 40 yards. So, and that was with a fully healthy Derrick Henry. So, we don't know. We don't know. Meanwhile, the Titans on the other side, uh, their their defense is vulnerable, especially in the past events has been very vulnerable the past couple of years. That's, that's the Bengals' bread and butters, throwing the football, Joe Burrow to Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd. Uh, I feel like the matchup might work out where, where where the Bengals might be able to make this a shootout and Joe Burrow might make the plays. And Ryan Tannehill might not make the plays. Uh, so I'm actually going to go with the upset here. All right, so you're going to go with the Bengals. I mean, for me, it's all about... If Derrick Henry's healthy, I'm taking the Titans. If not, then I'm definitely going to go with the Bengals. But, yeah. Uh, 
certainly, like, it's certainly going to be an interesting matchup, and certainly you do make a lot of points with how the Bengals could win it if they were to pull off the upset, but... Yeah, I can't help but think that the Bengals are, like, just one piece away from really going on a run next season. This season, they certainly proved that with what they got, uh, they can take on pretty much anybody and make a game out of it with anyone. So uh, that's certainly going to be probably, like I said, it's probably going to be the best game of the weekend, if anything, depending on how the other ones go, of course. But, yeah, could very well be the best game of the weekend, one to look out for. So you're going tight. You're going Bengals. I'll go Titans. Uh, let's see, the next game, 49ers and Packers. Uh, Packers are a six-point favorite. I'm going to go with Green Bay, of course, because the 49ers did enough, but th- this is where it ends for them. I'm with you 100%. I think the 49ers, they, they got their win last week against the Cowboys team. That's just not coached well. The Packers are going to be well coached. They're going to be up to the challenge. You know, Aaron Rodgers is for it. He's about that, you know. Um. Jimmy Garoppolo was still sh- has been shaky the last couple of games. He was shaky last week. He was shaky in their final game of the season against the the, the Rams, even though they got W's in both games. You know, I think the Luck's gonna run out here in Green Bay in at Lambeau. I picked the Packers, as you know, me and you both picked them to win the Super Bowl, so I'm with my Packers. Too. Absolutely. So yeah, that one, uh, let's see, only six points <coughs> separates them both. Only a touchdown. So yeah, that's one, that one should be close, but even, well, it'll probably be close in the beginning, and I imagine the Packers will probably pull away at the end. Uh, but it should be a good game nonetheless. And let's see what we got Sunday. Oh, Rams and Buccaneers on Sunday. This is a, uh, this is a monster matchup right here. Only three points. Separates them both. The Buccaneers are favored by three, but considering what the Rams have on both sides of the ball, I do believe that uh, the only reason the Buccaneers are a favorite in this game is because of solely is because of what they did last season. Um, I am going to go with the Rams, and uh, it, the Rams obviously are the more stacked team. They proved last week. Uh, and beating down a team that, let's face it, the Cardinals were like the best team in the NFL in the early part of the season before they bottomed out. But I feel like the Rams are pretty much they're they're in playoff mode now. They got their they had their big beat down win last week, and now they're gonna go take on the defending champions and make a statement. So I'm going to take the Rams uh, by three points. Take the underdog. Who you got? got the W when they played early this season, I think, back in September. Yes. Um, the big news coming into this game, or I think it's going to be the big deciding factor in this game, mm-hmm. is going to be the defenses, particularly the pass rush. Yes. On both sides, I think, you know, the Buccaneers and the Rams, both teams are notable for having great defensive fronts. I think both teams were in like the top five in sacks. Correct. Correct. Um, so, and, and I think it's notable that for Matt Stafford, he definitely struggles under pressure from the pass rush. Mm-hmm. And there's a chance, you know, I think Jitters could get to him, pass rush gets to him, and maybe he throws the game away. But I also know on the other side, you know, Tom Brady's susceptible to a pass rush too. And maybe not be in his top anymore, but maybe even, you know, for either side, I think maybe there might be a defensive touchdown maybe in this game or two. Um, I think one thing that's particularly notable about the Buccaneers, something that we saw coming out of the Eagles game, actually, is that they lost their right tackle, Tristan First, or First, however you pronounce his last name. Oh, yeah, Worst? Yeah. Yeah, and, Tristan Worst, yeah. And, like, there's, there's a notable, I was, I was looking at some film today, of like so he got hurt in the game and then he tried to come back and just got manhandled by like Von Miller and <laughs> Leonard Floyd and then, or no excuse me he got like manhandled by like some Eagles pass rushers I think it was like Mark Anderson mm-hmm. and, and like um, and then he was like all right yeah I probably can't block for you no more so they took him out and they put in his backup and like his backup just got fucking just mauled goodness so. There's a weakness on the Buccaneers' line. Mm-hmm. There's a weakness, and you know the Rams got that good pass rush. You know, 
to right. in the outside were Vaughn Miller and Leonard Floyd, mm. you know, so there's some vulnerability there and something to exploit, something to maybe go on <laughs> happen there. Um, in general, I just, I just think, you know, as you said, the Bucks are the favorite because of what they did last year. I don't think you're going to be able to measure up. Um, right. I'm feeling the Rams too. Yeah, it, it honestly, <clears throat> I'm surprised the Rams are actually not the favorite. They're only an underdog by three points, but that seems like a logical bet to me. Just like the 49ers cashed out for me last weekend, uh, my underdog pick is going to be the Rams. It's going to be the big underdog pick. Actually, it's going to be one of them, believe it or not, because my second, well, oh, before, before actually, we go on, I was just going to say, I think part of the reason why they're the underdog too is because of the cross-country trip. Well, that is true. Well, I, well, yeah, because the Rams are going cross country, so it does make sense there. But even so, it is interesting to see that they are like not just being underdog, but like the margin though. Like I thought maybe they would go like a point, point and a half. The fact that they're going three is a little surprising. I guess they really think the trip will affect them. We'll see. We'll definitely see. Uh, in our final game, though, the Bills and the Chiefs, the Bills are actually a two-and-a-half-point favorite as they go to Kansas City to face the Chiefs. Uh, what's interesting about this is I really like the – as much as I like the Chiefs, man, they've they've looked like a team uh, earlier in the season that looked like they were going to struggle a bit. They've had their moments of exposure. They've had their moments where they've held it together. Uh, it's been a It's been a very telling season for them. And it all started when they were exposed by the Buccaneers in the Super Bowl. You know, when Mahomes was running for his life, the defense pretty much collapsed on itself. And we saw a lot of those signs this season of both things still being a struggle. And then when I see what the Bills did to the Patriots, it really shows a different Bills squad that's a lot more focused than they were last year and a lot more hungry than they were last year. And... I think it's very interesting that they're a two and a half point fav- well underdog. Uh, even though again they're a road team, which probably plays into it, but I just find that very interesting. And when I look at both teams right now, I actually think the Bills are the better team. And even though they beat down the Patriots in their own house at home, you know they're going to Arrowhead, and it's not very it's not easy to win at Arrowhead. <clears throat> not it. Yeah, that's the thing. Not very easy to do it. So, you know, as much as I would love, as much as I think the Chiefs are going to win, my pick is actually going to go toward the Buffalo Bills. I'm not going to bet this game. <clears throat> well, actually, no, I lied. I'm going to bet the under on this game. I'm going to go under 54 and a half points. I think that they will, uh, it'll be a not a low scoring game, but it's going to be a very tight game. They're not going to be in too much of a shootout, I don't believe. It's going to come down to whoever has the last possession and can control the ball. But, um, yeah, I think the Bills can pull off the upset here. They have the team to do it. Uh, this is pretty much kind of their year to really make that statement, and I think they can do it. But it's going to be a tall task, though, because the Chiefs are still very good now that it's playoff time. The nor- regular season, they had their struggles, and they were certainly exposed at times. But it's the playoff time now, so... It's going to take everything to beat them, but I'm I'm going to lean the Bills on this one. Who you got? Man, to me, this is such a tough game to pick. It is. I think both teams <laughs> both teams started to get hot at the right time. Because the Bills, it was more than just last week. They started to win some crucial games towards the end of the season. This year. Yes, they did. Uh, so both teams were getting hot at the right time. I think, and of course, you got the storyline of the Chiefs. This was our AFC Championship game last year. The Chiefs won. Um, and then they met in Arrowhead earlier this season, and the Bills got their revenge. But here's the real revenge opportunity in our rubber match. Uh, man. Uh, Chiefs are at home. All three of these games have been at Arrowhead. Oh, yeah. Uh, Bills were looking good. The Chiefs were looking good. The Chiefs were looking a little slow. They got off to a slow start last week. They didn't get it going. I think that's what has me scared about this game, too, because 
you look at last week, the Bills got off to a hot start and the Chiefs got off to a slow start. Exactly. And both of them ended up in the same place. <laughs> right, right. their opponent. Um, and, you know, it makes you wonder if just like, all right, you know, like, ah, oh, there's, so, there's so much layers to this game. Um, you said you picked up the Bills. Yeah, I'll, I mean, I'm just going to go ahead and pick the Bills. I'll keep it interesting and pick the Chiefs. Chiefs, so we yeah. Split on another. Well, I figured you were going to do that once you were undecided, so yeah. But yeah, it's that it's that kind of a game where you just don't know what's going to happen. But even so, even so, like, no, no, no pick is really bad because if the Bills get off to a hot start, they're not going to let the Chiefs back in the game. You know, it's but again, it's all it's all depending on them if they can get off to the hot start because the Chiefs, they can settle into a game and then beat them down later. Uh, so yeah, like that's the thing that's scary about the Chiefs is that they can get off to a slow start. They can afford to do that, and then all of a sudden you blink and they put twenty one unanswered points on the board. But the question is though, will the Bills be able to get off to that hot start? Because I feel like if they do, then they're not going to let up. You know. But the other thing is that if they don't. Right. Well, they, if they do, they might not let up, but that doesn't necessarily mean that maybe the Chiefs might find a way to come back. But then again, if they don't get off to a hot start, next thing you know, they're down multiple possessions to the Chiefs, and I don't know if they come back. That's the thing. Their 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 best bet is to get off to the hot start, <clears throat> because even if the Chiefs come back, it'll probably probably be too little too late for the Chiefs to actually win the game. But if they don't get off to that hot start. Uh, the Chiefs can settle their way into it and then beat them down later on in the game. So this is more on the Buffalo Bills. Can they get off to that hot start? And can they keep the pressure on? Because if they play conservative, then they're going to let the Chiefs right back into it. Depending on how, like... Because that's the thing. They have to go up by, like... We're talking at least four or five touchdowns. They have to really pour it on them early. Like, they have to beat them down early. If they don't beat them down early... The, the Chiefs will play their way back into it, and they will increase their chances of winning. The The Bills have to close it out by halftime, essentially, if you think about it. I can get with that, especially, too, because if the Bills get up early, then, like, I have more faith in their defense than I do in the Chiefs' defense. I'm right, right. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's what makes this interesting. And you know what? We talked about game of the weekend. My okay, so even though Bills Chiefs is probably a, is a very close matchup, like you know, I think the Rams Buccaneers, even though it's close on paper, I think it'll be a beating. Uh, the only other game I see that's going to be very close is Cincinnati and Tennessee. My vote for game, like just early game of the weekend, I'm going to go ahead and say that the Bills and Chiefs steal the show uh, on Sunday night. Who do you think is going to steal the show uh, this weekend? Saturday and Sunday. Combined. I, mean, I, can agree. I can agree with that. Bills and Chiefs the show. Yeah, I, it's funny. I mean, that's, it's truly, for me, the game that I'm most looking forward to. Yeah, like, e- even though I'm, I'm really looking forward to that, the only other game on this list I'm really looking forward to is the Bengals and Titans. That one I'll be watching. Actually, it's funny. UFC 270 is on Friday, is on Saturday night, the big heavyweight title fight. Uh, before I go live for that, I'll be... I'll be live during the 49ers game, but that'll be a beatdown. You know, the Packers will kick them in the face. That'll probably be the lopsided game of the week, and maybe Skull Drag of the week, maybe? Potentially. I think so. So that game I'm not worried about missing, but Bengals, Titans, oh yeah, I'm watching that one. Then I'm going to go do the fights. You know what I mean? Like, that's how excited I am for it, that kind of thing. So I'll be doing that one, and then of course Sunday I'll be glued in front of the TV the whole day because I mean Rams Buccaneers. Even though on paper it's close, you and I kind of see it beating like last week. I, I bet you a lot of people listening to this probably think that'll be a close game too, which I can understand. But I, def- I, I, I think Rams and Bucks will be close. You think so? I think it'll be close because I think it's going to be a low-scoring game. <laughs> Yeah, I could see that. I could certainly see it being because the over under is forty. Think, the over under is forty eight points. By the way. Yeah, I think I think people think this game might score a lot of points, but I think the final score is going to be like twenty to seventeen or something like that. 
And by the way, if that's twenty to seventeen, that'll be that'll actually be the under forty eight points, which I was thinking about. Cause uh, it's funny, I have the under for the Bills Chiefs, which is fifty four and a half. I think that'll be low scoring as well. Rams Buccaneers, I thought about it, and the over under is at forty eight points. I'm I was leaning the under on that, and actually, now that you give me that score, I I might lay that. Actually, I may I may lay the under in that game. It's funny because I have the I have the Rams, but yeah. I could I could see a low scoring game in that one. That'll be good. Uh, let's see. Over under for the Packers 49ers, by the way, is forty seven points. Forty seven combined. That means the Packers are the Vegas probably thinks the Packers will put up like thirty five points most likely <laughs> for an over under like that. And then the over under for Bengals Titans. This is interesting. Forty seven and a half combined points. So Vegas thinks this will be like a. Um, like maybe well yeah twenty to seventeen, thirty seven. Yeah, like thirty seven seven. Yeah, like exactly. Like they they'll think it's gonna be something like that, or one of these two teams is gonna score thirty, or maybe both end up in the twenties, which could very well happen too. But yeah, a lot of close totals in this one, and close spreads as well. But yeah, good stuff all around. Is there any NFL news we need to get to uh, before we head out of here? Um. I guess the only brief NFL news to talk about, I mean, as far as, like, I don't think we mentioned it last week, the Raiders officially, like, really, like, turning the page. They fired their general manager, Mike Mayock. Ah, that's true. They did get rid of Mike Mayock. You are correct. The Raiders essentially are going to, um, they are going to clean house and essentially bring in a bunch of people, which, which kind of puts Derek Carr in an interesting spot. Are they going to keep Derek Carr? Are they going to ship him out? Seems like they're going to ship him out, but uh, it'll it'll be something to monitor. Yeah, it seems like he might be uh, on the trading blocks. So we'll see. And by the way, two other pieces of quick news. <clears throat> Dak Prescott was fined $25,000 for his comments directed at the referees, saying that he was essentially happy that the fans threw garbage at them, which is a very... Yeah. So- a very salty but honest thing to say. And in a way, he's right, because those refs were garbage. Uh, even though, as you and I proved earlier, the refs were not the reason why the Cowboys lost. So it's sour grapes on his part, but at the same time, those referees were pretty bad. And also, the Texans have begun conducting their head coaching search. And guess who they just interviewed today? Head coaching, well, former quarterback Josh McCown has been interviewed for the head coaching spot. And by the way, he is joining uh, actually a bunch of players like Gerard Mayo, um, Byron Leftwich, a good amount of former players that you and I know uh, have actually begun doing their interviews for head coaching spots. So really those are the only two things to uh, note. But other than that, everything else is good. And, of course, as you and I talked about earlier, uh, the Titans are going to decide tomorrow uh, on Friday as to whether or not Derrick Henry will play. Uh, That, of course, that piece of news was also dropped. So, yeah, that's pretty much it for the week, folks. I hope you all enjoy the games this weekend. Uh, Remember, bet responsibly, drink responsibly, and enjoy your football responsibly. Uh, We are split on the Bengals-Titans game. I'm going Titans. He's going Bengals. Uh, We both have the Packers. We both have the Rams in an upset. That's going to be our upset special. Only because the Rams are listed as a dog. Is that an upset? Um, And actually, uh, you're picking the Bengals. So technically, you endorse them being an underdog. That, That counts, correct? So if you all want a second underdog, uh, be money is throwing out the Bengals there as your second underdog to go with the Rams. Uh, if you don't want a second underdog, you can of course side with me and the Titans on that one. Uh, but of course, that is all your preference. Uh, the Packers, of course, we agree is going to win that one. The favorite, the Rams, the other underdog, we're going to take. And then of course, in the final game, if you want another underdog, I am going to go with the Bills now. If you don't feel comfortable with the Bengals, the Bills will be a good underdog to go with as well. But on the on the flip side, if you want another favorite to throw in there, uh, money you pick the Chiefs, so you pretty much endorse them as a favorite, I imagine. Yeah. 
good stuff. So you can Very always. Yes. Yeah, un- unconvincingly, but yeah, by default, because you're picking them, uh, you would endorse them. Not endorse them to gamble, but you at least endorse the pick if somebody were to do it. And you can understand, sure. yeah, you can understand why they'd go that way. So, uh, yeah, we're split on that. Bill, I'm Bills, he's Chiefs. Uh, we're both going Rams, both going Packers. I'm going Titans, he's going Bengals. Folks, thank you all so much for your time this week. Is yours truly, Jay Smooth. Join with me, Money, and I imagine you'll be joining me for the, uh, it is championship uh, week next week, correct? Conference championship week? It is. Yeah, that's right, it is, it is. So next weekend, we will have two matchups, one to determine the NFC, the NFC champion, and of course the AFC champion to be determined in the other matchup. We will figure out who those are. After all the games Saturday, Sunday, folks, we will see you next week. Until then, money and I, smooth money, are gone.